so the first part of this video I'm going to show you guys how to make a bag with a drop lining and an inside pocket no zipper or anything because I have a video on how to do an inside pocket in a bag these fabrics are turned with right sides facing together so you guys know ahead of time anyway uh, the first thing we're going to need to do is I guess I should start um, getting into the habit of doing this in my videos is gather your supplies and you're going to need some old newspaper or some craft paper or something that you can make a pattern with or if you only plan on making one of these bags you could probably do it on the fabric but if you mess up then you know I have made my pattern 14 long by 12 wide and that's just uh, just a random number I came up with because I want kind of a big bag. I might use this for myself. I might sell it in my Etsy shop. I don't know. Um, then you will need two different kinds of fabric. You'll need, this is going to be my outside fabric. And you're going to cut two of each for the outside and for the lining. And I cut mine right sides to get facing together. I've said that before, but I'll make sure I say it in this video so any newcomers know that. So what you're seeing is the wrong sides of the fabric with the right sides facing together. This is the pocket. And I just kind of, I cut the pocket about um, 7 by 5, just a random size that I cut it. I cut two pieces for that pocket and I will show you in the video how to create that pocket and sew it on the inside. Now I've got two pieces for the lining. And then you will need two pieces of fusible interfacing. And that's going to go on the outside part of the bag. And for this, I'm going to close it with some um, with some hook and loop or some Velcro. And I've got the rolls of the sticky and the whatever you call each side there. So you don't need that much. It's just the I've had this roll forever. It's, you just need to cut this to size once you get everything else done. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fuse this interfacing to the outside fabric of the bag. Not the outside of the bag, but the fabric that's going to go on the outside. I'm going to fuse the interfacing to the back of the fabric using my iron. And I do have a video on how to do interfacing. If you want to go check that video out, you'll probably see the link right here. I'll do that off camera and then I'm going to come back and show you the next step. Okay, so I've got my interfacing fused to the back of the fabric, the outside of the bag the fabric that's going to be the outside of the bag but just can't talk right sometimes and I did I forgot to mention it but I cut mine my interfacing about an inch below the size of my bag because I want to fold it over since it's going to be a drop lining and that interfacing if you go all the way to the top it just creates some extra bulk but makes it a little more difficult to sew with an everyday home sewing machine so you probably want to do it that way it just goes together smoother and you don't get the skip stitches or the you know really tight stitches and then really loose stitches so that's the best way to do it um, so the next thing we want to do obviously is press down this um, top edge and I'm going to do that on the outside and on the lining pieces of the bag and then I'm going to take the pocket and what will be the top lining of the pocket I'm going to fold those down too because what I'm going to do is sew around the three sides and then leave this open for turning and if you go ahead and fold and press this it makes it a lot smoother edge for the pocket. Okay. I've got the each one pressed down on the lining in the outside parts of the bag and I went ahead and pressed down the pocket and I also sewed around the three sides. Now I just want to clip these corners, not clipping through the where it's stitched together, but you want to clip close to that where you went around that. Now I go all the way down and all the way to the edges when I do these because it just makes the clipping part easier. And I also want to clip these top edges at a slight angle without clipping through the the seam. So I'm going to do that. And then what I want to do is turn it. I'm going to turn this pocket. I'm sorry if you guys didn't see me. I'm at a really odd angle here. Okay, 
And when I turn this pocket and get all the corners poked out and make sure everything's straight before we press it. Now see, this is our opening. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stitch across that and that's going to be the top part of our pocket. And I'll um, do a couple of lines with the machine just to close that opening up. And then I can place the place the pocket on the lining where I want it and I'll just pin it a couple of places and stitch it on there and that part will be done. Okay, so you can see there I did a double line across the top of the pocket and now all I'm going to do is making sure I've got it at the top, close to the top where this fold is. I'm going to place it somewhere about two-thirds of the way up the bag and center it. I know it's, it's hard to see because it's the same pattern here. My, my little dog is going crazy in there. I think there's an ambulance outside. They're always out here for one reason or another. Um, I'm just pinning in a couple of places. I don't like to over pin because it causes bunching and crinkling and wrinkling and then you get a mess. So I'm just going to go around the three sides of the pocket, leaving the opening of course, and then I'll start constructing the bag. So you can see I've got my pocket sewn on. And I always like to do a double line on the bottom of the pocket too, just because I feel like it keeps it more secure and it looks better with the line on the top and the opening. So that step is done. So I'm going to take the lining pieces and sew those together, leaving the top open. And I'm going to do the same thing with the outside pieces and then I will make gussets and I think so. I'm going to do that off camera. I'm going to do the put the pieces together and do the gussets off camera. I do have a video on how to square the bottom or create the gussets however you want to call it and you can refer to that video and you will see it right about here and you can check that out and uh, it's just a real quick tutorial on how to do the gussets so that I don't have to include it in every video where I do a bag with a square bottom or a gusseted bottom. Alrighty, now we've got our bags closed up at the bottom. We've sewn all around and I've gusseted the bottoms of each bag. And I almost forgot, but luckily I didn't get so far that I couldn't go back. Um, we need to put the hook and loop or the Velcro on the lining of the bag and we can leave it turned right side out. And what we want to do is find those side seams and meet those side seams together and then find the center. And I just kind of crease it with my fingernail and I'm going to mark it just a little tiny place with a pencil so that I know I've got the middle of each one and we don't want to do this too close to the top we want to keep it um, out of the way when we drop the lining in we're going to have to sew it onto the outside of the bag so I'm just going to cut I don't know, about three and a half inches. I don't want to close the whole bag with it either. I just want it to close the bag up really good. Make sure it stays in place. So I'm going to use that first piece and then just put it right there on the second piece and use it to cut it. Now what I'm going to do it's just kind of center the first one and I want to put it you don't want to go too far down you want it to close the bag and you don't want it to have like a you know gap when it opens but you want to put it about about an inch below the top edge and just kind of try to center it if it helps you you can actually fold the hook and loop over and mark the center of it so you can match it up with the center mark that you made there so I'm going to do that and then I can just kind of see it on the bottom. Just make sure you don't mark it on the top. I put my pencil mark a little too far up and it's going to show. So if you don't want it to show or you want to be able to just wipe it off, you can use a, like a fabric marker or something or fabric chalk. This may erase. Yep. 
Okay, so I've got that marked, and what I'm going to do is I'm, I don't pin these because it makes an awful mess in my experience. So what I like to do is I start on one of the sides and I backstitch um, really well to make sure that it stays, and then I just go as close to the edge as I can. It gets a little tricky with the plastic part, this kind of fabric part is, is not so hard to do, but that's, you know, you just have to be careful with it. Use a little bit of longer stitch. I use a medium speed, 3.0 stitch length, and I just take my time and try to make it look as neat as possible. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to match up the, the back one with that one, and I'm going to sew both pieces of Velcro on there, and then we'll be ready to make the straps and attach those. Okay. So we've got our Velcro on each side of the inside of the bag, and if you're a little confused by that, this is how the lining is going to go inside. So. And close it right up with Velcro and open it right back up. So now we're going to move on to making the straps for the bag and then I'm going to show you how to um, put those straps on and drop the lining in or the strap. It's not going to be two. It's going to be one. Um, and show you how to drop the lining in and sew it around. And um, One thing I want to tell you, remind you of is I, I learned things the hard way myself. So um, once you have this hook and loop or this velcro on here you do not want to iron over it i, I was doing a video once and it's a little um, clutch that i made and i ironed over it and it melted all of these little hooks loops or whichever side this is and they, it wouldn't um, close up so if you're going to press it you're going to need to keep that heat completely off of there i don't know that you could probably, I don't know, cover it with a sock or something thick so that it doesn't, the heat doesn't penetrate it. But if you um, press over this, I don't know if I said so just a minute ago, but I meant to say press. If you press over these, you've ruined it. The, the Velcro is not going to stick anymore. So just be careful of that. Be aware of that when you um, get ready to finish up the bag and do that final pressing to get everything neat and clean. So I'm going to move on to making the straps. Okay, y'all, it's Renee here, and um, I'm going to, we're moving on to the, um, making the adjustable strap, and I've got the outside of the bag and the lining right here, and um, I'm going to use the lining fabric, some of this fabric like the lining, to make the strap. I just thought it would kind of be neat to give it a little different, you know, a little contrast from the outside of the bag. So I'm going to set this aside, and I'm going to cut my fabric for the strap. So anyway, I had um, didn't have the parts to... I, I keep everything. <laughs> and I didn't ha exactly have a store-bought or brand new like um, belt loop or any of that stuff to make the straps. I had this um, from a pair of pants that I bought that had a little belt with them, and I kept it a long time ago. I just snipped the... But I think I used the rest of the belt to make a little pocketbook handle or something. But I saved these little plastic pieces and I'm going to use those and I'm also going to use this little piece from a um, I'm not even sure. I don't know. It might have came from a purse or an old belt but it's not the strongest metal. So well, it is pretty strong but it sounds flimsy. So I'm going to cut this these two loops out of here. And I think we're only going to need one of them. So what you're going to need for the hardware is like a, maybe a D-ring or something like this. And then you're going to need one that's like a belt loop or whatever you call that, a buckle. So uh, you can get those probably fairly cheaply at Hobby Lobby. So I'm going to put this one aside and save it for something else. And I'm going to put these aside. And the first thing that I want to do, and I'm not using any pattern piece or anything, but I am going to take this fabric and I really don't think that crossways, even for a crossbody, this just cutting one piece of this is not going to be enough to make an adjustable strap that will be long enough to do anything. So what I'm going to do is, with, I'm not even going to make a pattern piece, but I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to measure out... Um, 
Let me just say two, but this piece is slightly more narrow than this one. So I want to make sure that when I create my strap, it fits into this one because it's okay if it's a little too small for the opening, but if it's too big, it's not going to look right and it's probably not going to adjust so smoothly. So anyway, what I'm going to do is cut um, this piece all the way across and it's on the fold. So it's a, probably about 42 inches and then I'm, I'm going to cut it, uh, I'm going to say five inches thick because I'm going to do a fold over strap and I'm, the way I'm going to create it, but you'll see. But anyway, I'm going to create two of those pieces and probably what I'm going to end up doing is cutting one of them in half. But I'll show you. I'm just wasting my time explaining and confusing you. I'm going to cut a couple of pieces so that I can create a long enough strap to make an adjustable strap. And I'll show you how I'm going to put them together and how I'm going to make them work on the bag. And we also need one small piece that's going to go on this. So I'm going to cut one piece that's probably about six inches long and about five inches wide, the same width as the strap will be. And that's going to go on this piece that's going to be attached to the purse that you can feed the, yeah. Anyway, you'll see. I'll be, I cut two strap pieces on the fold and you're seeing four here because I'm opening them up to show you that I do wrong sides facing together. And these are the folded ends of each one. So I've got two and I cut them five inches wide and I've just cut across the, the folded fabric. If you have enough fabric that you could cut down and just cut one entire piece of say 60 or 70 inches, that would be great. But I don't have that so I had to make do with what I had. And then I have a five inch wide piece here that's about it's probably about eight inches long, but some of that, I'll just see how it works out when I get ready to put it in the little ring here. And if it's, if I think it's too much, then I, I may cut some off, but I'm kind of liking the, the length of it right now. So the first thing I'm going to do with these two pieces that I'm going to use to make one strap is I want to sew one end together. right sides facing together and I'm just going to sew this down right there and then I'm going to press that seam open to make it nice and flat and then we'll start folding and measuring and getting it ready for the belt buckle. Okay, so where is it? I have these two pieces sewn together. Now I want to go to one end and I just want to kind of start trying to figure out exactly where, how much I need to fold to get this buckle to fit because what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the sides and then I'm going to fold it over on itself and put it through the buckle. So I kind of, I just do a lot, a lot of guessing. You guys that are regular to my channel know that, but it usually comes out okay. I'm pretty good at eyeballing things. So I'm going to fold this over about an inch and a half because I feel like it's, I probably made it a little too wide, but it's not going to hurt anything. So I could have made it maybe four or even three and a half inches and did the fold over and still had plenty. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my machine to 3.5 stitch length, medium speed, and I'm going to do three lines neatly as I can. I'll just use the first line to gauge the second line, the second line to gauge the third line to make sure everything's nice and neat, and then we'll start putting the buckle on, and I'll show you how to put it on your purse and do all that good stuff. So at the stitches sewn on this um, handle here and I'll let you guys in on a little secret. My stitches for stuff like this aren't always straight and perfect the way I want them to be. So what I did was I went in and just kind of moved the needle around and made them, you know, 
not straight lines on purpose because the first line didn't turn out so good and you can see that it looks pretty good like that so anyway um we're gonna set that aside for the moment and we may end up um having to cut a bit of that if the adjustments um, if it's too long but we'll just see once we get to that step the next thing we want to do is i want to go ahead and get this piece ready which will hold the this little ring here i don't it's not a d-ring i keep wanting to call it a d-ring i'm trimming this fabric up because i feel like it was too thick for that first one so I want to make sure this one's not too thick. And I'm just giving a little bit of a trim, not a whole lot, because I also noticed that it wasn't straight. I'm going to take this and um, to the machine, and I'm just going to make some lines to close this up where it's folded over and. I get that done and then we'll start putting the all the pieces together to make the adjustable strap. Okay, so I've got the line sewn in this um, piece that's going to be attached to the bag and I'm going to go ahead and run this piece through. Okay, I've got the end sewn down and now I want to sew close to the top of this. and. Um, if you have a piece that's flat on the edge like this, I think you can do this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to rest that presser foot really close to that edge. And I'm going to make sure I'm kind of pulling a little bit. And I'm going to do a little tiny back stitch. And then I'm going to go all the way across here. And the presser foot's not touching this edge because I feel like that might be too close. But it's really, really close. So there we go. That piece looks really nice, really well put together. So now we just need to construct the adjustable strap and then attach it to the purse. Alrighty, so we've got our pieces to our strap. And um, from what I've seen other people do with this, you don't really need to fold under this. You can leave that raw edge for this part. Um, it might make it a little less bulky and if you use some stop fray or something on the end, it should be fine. Um, the first thing we want to do with our buckle is to run it through the top part. See, mine has a back and a front. Some that you get may not. Um, but this part needs to be... Now that, I guess that really doesn't matter. It's going to come through either way. Okay, so kind of decide how far down you want to go with that. I'm going to take it about that far. I've folded it over to about two and a half inches. From this to the fold, it's about two and a half inches. And then what I want to do is take it to the machine and just sew a square all around here, being careful not to get this little piece that's in here. But I want to sew a square. I don't want to do a line just across. I want to square it so that it stays in place really well and it's nice and snug in there. So Whew, that was super tricky but I did it. I've got the um, outside of the bag and what I want to do since this is a drop lining I'm not going to put this down like this. I'm going to put it the way I would want it to be in the bag once I drop that lining in there. So I'm going to take this little piece right here and you see it's on the inside and I'm giving it I don't know, about an inch, inch and a half in there. And I'm just centering it with the side seam here. What I'm going to do is get a couple of pins. That one's all crooked and wonky. Let's see. My daughter was over there laughing at me because I messed up. I did this whole take that was wrong. I was telling you guys wrong. But at least I didn't do any sewing before I did it. So she's getting a good laugh off of me over there. I bet if I turn the camera on her though she'd kill me. So I'm going to leave this up like this. You don't want it to be inside the bag or over the bag like this. You want to sew just straight across there and attach it. And you can do a little box stitch if you want to. It probably would hold it in place better. So that's probably what I'm going to do. You see I've got this piece sewn on here. Now the next thing we need to do is attach 
the strap the actual strap so what I'm gonna do is make sure that I've got this part that I sewn down down yeah we want it facing up because it's kind of gonna kind of be hidden in there in between the layers so I'm just gonna hold it so I can follow it along and make sure that nothing gets crooked since it's such a long piece and then I'm gonna feed it through this piece and see that I've got that end of that buckle there wow this is just I said I was gonna try to stop cussing in my videos but I'm getting close in this one okay so now I'm gonna feed it through just like buckling a belt you know just feed it through there And I want to make sure that it's all straight, nothing's crooked. Can you see what I'm doing? And then I'm going to take it to the other side over here. Making sure that I've still got everything straight. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did over there. And I did press my uh, middle seams open in the inside of the bag to make it less bulky. And I'm going to take it over to the machine, and I'm going to sew it down with a square or two, and then I'll show you the how to drop the lining in, and the bag will be all finished up and ready to use. And Alrighty, I've sewn the straps on, and you can see this is, like I said, y'all, I'm working with my found materials. I really should have made this a tighter fit, because it's going to be really hard to keep it adjusted. But um, other than that, you know, you get the gist of what I'm trying to do here. So that's the buckle end where you can slide it up and down. You see it slides a little too easy. You don't want it to be quite that easy to slide through. And really the two of these should be the same size. You see there's just such a big width difference in this one and this one. But anyway, you, you're learning how to make an adjustable strap. So that was the point. Now what I want to do is... I've got the strap on, so I want, strap on, that didn't sound right. Um, I want to put the lining in, and what I'm going to do is just kind of fold this lining in and drop it in here, and then I want to line up the side seams. And I'm going to a little tricky with that velcro but anyway I'm gonna line up these side seams and I'm gonna pin them down and then I'm just gonna sew a neat edge around the top to connect everything alrighty y'all so there it is the purse on the mannequin and you can see the uh, my strap is pulled almost as small as it'll get and if it was pulled all the way as long as it could get it would probably hit the floor so you don't really need to add a whole lot of length to the extra you just want to measure it to where the purse will hit right about at the hips the way it is on the mannequin with the strap normal and then maybe add 10 to 12 inches to that just you know to make it adjustable or you can make it 10 to 12 inches I don't know just figure it out <laughs> um, it was a fun project to make. I really like the fabric for that purse, and I like the idea. I'm actually going to go next week and purchase um, some hardware and try and do it with the right hardware, the buckle and the D-rings and things, and see how it turns out when I do it that way. But it's it's an easy project. It's uh, Beginners can do this um, all the way up to experts. So you guys enjoy. Have fun. Peace. Bye-bye, y'all.